This happened to me back in the winter of 2003 when I was 16 years old. It is by the far the weirdest thing that has ever happened to me that I still do not have an explanation for. It was a dreary winter day. All the trees were bare and it's gray and gross looking outside. There is no snow on the ground. These details are important to set the scene. So one afternoon my boyfriend and I were leaving my house to go somewhere and before I got into his car I realized I forgot something. I handed him my purse and asked him to put it in his car. It was a bright blue Dooney and Burke purse that was widely popular in the early 2000s. I loved this purse. I also had basically my whole life in this purse, my wallet and all my money, my Nextel phone, my makeup. Literally everything that was important to 16 year old me. I come back to the car and get in and we go. A few minutes later I say hey you put my purse in here, right? Yeah it's in the back he said. I turn and look and see it partially covered up by some clothes. A few moments later I turn to get it and it's not there. I am looking everywhere. Eventually I tell him to pull over so that the purse isn't here. So we pull over and tear the car apart. It's not there. I'm upset and ask, didn't you put it in the car? He of course is upset too and swears he did. I swear that I even saw it in the back. So we went back to my house figuring it must have fallen out. We get back and start searching everywhere. Everywhere in the driveway, the road, my front yard, etc. My house and driveway was not very big so it's not that big of a space it could be. At some point my dad comes out from all the commotion and starts to look. We literally looked everywhere and it's nowhere to be found. After about 10 minutes of looking I start to give up. I was very upset thinking how I'll never be able to replace my phone, all my money, etc. I sit down in my driveway and then the weirdest feeling comes over me. I can only describe it as a feeling of warmth and totally calm and it's like a voice told me to calm down and just look up. I look up and the purse materializes in front of my eyes. It literally just appeared right in front of me on our rock ledge. I say out loud, oh, there it is, and very calmly and almost trance-like walk over to it. My dad and boyfriend are just shocked. Because it wasn't there a minute before. My dad was standing right there. Everything is in the purse, nothing is out of sorts, no marks or dirt to indicate it fell off the car or anything. And the weirdest detail is that there is no way three people missed a bright blue purse in the middle of winter with no snow and no sun, it would have instantly stuck out against the backdrop of the day. I even remember seeing it in his car. No people walked by as we were looking, our neighbors weren't home, just no explanation for how it appeared in front of our eyes. Almost like I willed it back to me. I'll never forget that feeling I had. I've never felt anything like that again. My boyfriend refused to discuss how the purse magically appeared after that. He was really freaked out and just kept saying how positive he was that he put the purse in his car. I no longer have the purse. In a weird twist of events, I sold it to a friend years later who told me a few months after that it went missing from her room and she never saw it again. So this is a timeline that is strange. My current BF and I met in August. I met his friend and his wife in September, not their daughter, since we visited an adult restaurant late at night for this double date. I only remember meeting them this time and not going to their home until October when he moved into his new house and had to get things from their home. However this is where things got weird for me, when we went to his best friend's house to pick up things he had stored in his friend's basement while he found a house, my BF walked away while I parked the car and I had no idea which house was theirs I had to wait for him to come back out to get me to figure it out. Then when we went inside his friend's daughter ran up to me, I don't remember knowing her, but kids are strange, but then, the wife asked me how I liked her decorations. I was confused because I had no idea how I would have known her decorations were new. I had never been to their house. All of them acted like I should have known one, their home location too, had met the daughter three, would be able to see the difference between old decorations and new. I was confused and remembered but didn't think much of it. Kids will run up to strangers and maybe it was easy to tell the others had I paid more attention. 
but turns out there's a date which I have no memory of, where my BF, I and their little family all tried to go bowling couldn't go, went to a buffet to eat and even hung out in the BFFS house for a bit, hence why I would have known the location of the house and met their child. Now while I have a great memory, I played with the possibility I simply forgot however my BF and them have no proof this happened. Had we gone to the buffet my BF would have paid he never uses cash and there is no charge on his only two cards for the date also I have pictures of almost every day this could have possibly take place and nothing. Each day is accounted for and no pictures of the date either. It's rare I don't take pictures on our dates especially if food is involved. But all days this date could have taken place. I have either a selfie or other pictures proving I wasn't anywhere near him or the tracking on Google Maps also backs up that this date never happened. Seems like all four of them for some reason come from a timeline where this date took place. I wonder why they all jumped and I'm kinda anxious now I never forget things like this but to have no proof of the date really solidifies that I am not just forgetting. In this timeline it didn't happen. This one is going to take a little explaining and I apologize in advance, as in order to explain the gravitas of this, I need to delve a little into the kind of person I am. I am a collector of manga, anime, figures and video games, and have been since 2013 when I was a minor scraping money together through odd jobs. My collection has been posted a couple of times on the appropriate subs and finding them shouldn't be too difficult, but the value of it, like most hobbies, can probably only be parsed by others with the same interests. All you need to know is that this collection is worth a lot of money, includes a lot of obscure, expensive and rare things, and casual purveyors of collecting in the same field would not have anything close to mine. I take collecting quite seriously and have been perfecting my craft for the last decade. I have become adept at recognizing rare and obscure goods, knowing when something is about to become rare, analyzing the value of items, and acting accordingly in all scenarios. I keep checklists of things I want, or leave them in my Amazon save for later basket for future reference even if they have been unavailable on the store for some time. As I write this I have a mental note of rare games I don't own but would like to, and anime series I'm not particularly chomping at the bit to own, but would like to one day. These can date back as far as the PS1 era, or not so popular anime from the early 2010s that I think about before promptly spending my money on something else. Parallel to this, or perhaps intertwined with, is a video game series called Shin Megami Tensei, henceforth SMT. It is a franchise of JRPGs made by Atlas since the 80s, and my favorite franchise ever. Though most of my collection is an assortment of things I like or think look cool, my SMT. The collection has a dedicated glass cabinet, and I have gone to great lengths to own limited editions, figures, random stuff to make it look pretty. The only reason I forked out money on a 3DS was so I could own SMT re-releases like Strange Journey, Devil Survivor 1 Plus 2, and Devil Summoner, Soul Hackers. Imagine my shock, then, that in a Discord call with some friends last night, I came to find that I didn't own the latter. Last night. Me and two friends got together on a call and spoke about random crap for about five hours. We rambled as you do until one of them said that she struggles to import 3DS games in the country she lives in and wants to buy two games called Persona Q and Persona Q2. Me, being the asshole that I am, wanted to jokingly flex my copies and so I pulled out my 3DS collection from under my bed to find them. I spread out my entire collection and noticed Soul Hackers wasn't there. I thought it was odd, but initially just looked under my bed again to see if it had slid out when the drawers got pulled and pushed. It wasn't there. I used to put my 3DS games on the top shelf, which may have left a game prone to falling down the back. My shelving units are bolted onto the wall and have a backboard, so if something fell in the years I had them up, I may have either forgotten about them or decided I can't do anything about it and would just retrieve it at a later date. Still, I took a flashlight and phone to the crevices between the back of the unit and the wall and tried to scope out anything back there. I couldn't see anything. At this point, I had begun to interact with my friends again, who suggested I have gaslit myself into thinking I bought a game when I didn't. 
As I mentioned, though, I'm very thorough with my collection and if I didn't own it, it would be saved somewhere on one of my checklists or left to rot in my Amazon basket. It doesn't show up anywhere. Becoming rather frazzled, I began to check my purchase history on eBay, Amazon, and Suex. It turns out that I bought all of my SMT games on 3DS in 2017, six years ago, which was a time when I had a lot of money and was less than sensible with it. Soul Hackers did not appear anywhere. I had never bought it. I never owned it. I even went and scrolled through a Twitter account I don't use anymore to locate videos of me showing off my collection and videos dating as far back as 2020 do not show me ever owning Soul Hackers. Again, though, I feel I need to re-emphasize how uncharacteristic this is of me in order to shirk that this is just a faulty memory issue, and words posted through a Reddit post will never adequately reflect the degree of certainty I am trying to communicate to strangers about how I approach my hobby. I keep checklists. I even have a dedicated Discord server for me, myself, and I where I post links into channels as a kind of organized memo. My Amazon basket is filled with things from as early as 2015 that I wanted to buy, but just never got around to it, and the sadly not uncommon scenario of me purchasing the game online and having to either send it back or it not arriving isn't reflected in my history at all. On top of this, my 3DS collection has been in my immediate sight for five of the last six years. I was always looking at it, and I scrolled through them multiple times to sell games in order to have funds available. These were never SMT games, but instead rare Kirby games as I couldn't get into the series. When I do my price checking of things I own to see their value, I remember punching in Soul Hackers and seeing it be worth 90 to 120 pounds. Yet I didn't feel the urge to gather funds to grab it quickly because I knew I already owned it. When Soul Hackers 2 came out last year, I never thought that I still needed to buy the first game because I knew I already owned it. By my own internal criteria, a situation like this occurring is not only unlikely, but impossible. I cannot look at aspects of my collection without thinking, oh, this is incomplete, or I still need to get this, or that reminds me to look at getting X2. Every time I look at my 3DS collection, I am reminded that my Professor Layton series is missing a game, and the same goes for my Etrian Odyssey collection, but there has never been a point in time where I looked at my SMT collection and saw any discrepancy. I am not amazed or curious. I am uncomfortable. Last night, I genuinely felt like I had gone insane. I remember DVDs and games I sold off because I didn't care for them from 8 to 10 years ago. I remember things I sold and later regretted. I remember series and games I have a passing interest in owning off the top of my head, and I know exactly what I do and don't own if someone asked me. Yet despite all this, a game from my favorite franchise has somehow bypassed all of my checks and balances and been a phantom part of my collection for over half a decade without me ever realizing it wasn't there. It doesn't add up. I don't like it, and I don't accept that I never owned this game.